If you're looking for a clean, sober, professional, academic, well-researched, historically accurate, generally accurate, serious podcast on Southern folklore, ghosts, bizarre events, and unique people, this podcast is not for you. However, if you've decided you can live with that, then join us for The Strange South. Sit here and look. I don't even have to look pretty this damn podcast. You don't even have to look pretty. I just have to sit here and enjoy. And enjoy. Hi, Patrice. Hi, Marleya. Hi, Courtney. Hi, y'all. You started with a proper hello today. I know. Proud of you. (laughs) I know. (laughs) (laughs) She's showing off her candy cane. Look at mine. Oh, they're melting. (laughs) Oh, I'm wow, so sorry. Really I'm loud. so sorry. Oh my <laughs> was, god! Well, it looks like you've got a shiv. Yeah, I yeah. do. You could, I think you could. I mean, even with that, candy even cane. more than normal candy cane. It's, it's like, like eating my. It's like a yeah. It's the scotch. Mm. It's the scotch reacting with your candy cane. Mm, wow. <laughs> what are we drinking? <laughs> I'm trying to name it, but you know, I don't know how creative I should get. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I don't know. It's creative. kind of a it's a Scottish Christmas coffee. Mm. Ooh. Because um, you know, everybody's heard of Irish coffee. And um, but I don't I really drink Irish whiskey yet. I'm getting there. I've recently moved to Scotch because I'm planning to go to Scotland soon for one. <laughs> and I like whiskey. You look so happy. And so anyway, I decided to do a coffee because our friend, lovely friend Josh. Made ginger cookies, oh homemade God. ginger cookies. They are so very good. giant cookies. They're and delicious. They are, and they're soft, delicious, ginger, so ginger. They got a little crunch to them too. I guess it's like the, the little know. ginger crystals. The crystals. Yeah, the crystals. I think it's yeah. Mm, it's the best. So when he, uh, when and when box Vag, box fan Chad texted me that this morning, I was like, he said, I thought you might want to know if you want these cookies so you can plan a drink. And so I thought coffee. Because mm. I thought all day I was going to get warm, but I never did, even though it said it was 60 degrees and it didn't feel like it to me. So I was like, we need a coffee drink. So I did a coffee. Um, I used the Glenlivet 12 year. So this is not cheap scotch by Ooh. any means. <laughs> I mean, it's not the most expensive. You know, we're talking mid level with I crushed some candy cane in it first and then mm. two teaspoons of brown sugar and then I topped off with a heavy cream and a candy cane. So and it's call pretty. It the minty kilt. The minty kilt. I love it. A peppermint kilt. Okay. Peppermint kilt. Yeah. <laughs> there is one called there. Are, there is a uh, a coffee a kilt kilt coffee or something, but it's a little different. Mm, I think like it has cocoa in it. Arctic wind up your backside. <laughs> <laughs> a peppermint kilt. All right. Yeah, I like it. Cheers. Cheers. I feel derpy tonight. I apologize. It's all right. Sometimes you're just going to be the derp. (laughs) I do. (laughs) I'm a little out of it today, too, and I don't really know why. It's just because it's the culmination of, like, everything coming to an end. We've got, like... But it won't end. Why won't it end? I know. (laughs) Where it's supposed to end. We all pretend that it ends, and then we pretend for a couple of weeks that it's ended, and then it just revs right back up. I know that I counted. I was like, I have three Mondays left. I I can do it three times. (laughs) Two. I thought it was two, but it's three. (laughs) Yeah, but the third one comes, like, the day before your last Nobody's going to be there. Everybody's like already gone. Yeah. Students are gone. Mm-hmm. Their, their brains Students left. Students have been gone for like a while. Three weeks ago. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm not coming back after Thanksgiving. All right, then. Enjoy. <laughs> Bye. I'm not either. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy that grade. Oh, Lordy. So, Marley and I went to the Jacksonville Christmas Parade. Mm-hmm. And we have all sorts of ideas. Yes. That oh, Lord. That never happen. <laughs> it was so funny. It was, we was like We enjoyed it. It was cold. Oh, it was very cold. Luckily, the wind yeah. wasn't blowing, but... It was cold um, that night. It was really yeah, cold. you know, we weren't really having to watch the children anymore mm-hmm. because they were, like, kind of with their friends and got the teen hang going on which mm-hmm. I, like made my heart happy and so more like 
and I were sitting there scheming. Well, first of all, we were cussing because we forgot to bring booze. Yeah, yeah. Um, rookie mistakes. Rookie. It was a dry parade. I wasn't there. I, I said parade. no. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so we sat there and, and just started scheming because we were watching these floats go by. <laughs> <laughs> float. Of course, you know. I can't see, and apparently Marlea can't see. <laughs> she can't see shit. <laughs> and so there's a float coming down the way, pulling a, a trailer of what we don't know yet. But Marlea goes, goes, um, Christmas at He Man's, <laughs> and I was like, what? Where's He Man? Where's he? Where's Skeletor? <laughs> where's the big cat? Like, where's the buff dudes? What's what's going on here? Like, and she just kept going, He Man. <laughs> He man, it's like and it was like one of those closer. Monty Monty Python things because it took it felt like it took twelve years to like <laughs> get closer, and so just as it was like getting close enough for her to read it, we see it's pulling like a trailer full of grannies, <laughs> and it's Christmas at Mima's. <laughs> Where it said He Man's. I was, we I was were like, highly what? disappointed. Christmas at He Man's. What were the Meemaws doing? Crocheting and stuff? They were just sitting there being Meemaws. Throwing, they weren't throwing candy. They definitely either. weren't throwing oh, candy. Oh Not even gosh. butterscotch. No. They should have been throwing those little stripey things that all like meld together in the dish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Balls. The little ball, the ball of pep butter mints or whatever. Like all, all those, uh, was it just sugar candies mm-hmm. that? Just mm-hmm. throw them into the crystal bowl that they dust every other week. They weren't throwing candy. There were a lot that Me weren't throwing candy. Weren't throwing they, candy? Were, they were like, we're out of candy. They and say I'm that like, every year. I'm like, they're, you're halfway. You're at the halfway point. You you should plan better. Like really, mm-hmm. and you need mm-hmm. to get somebody to work on that sign because it, it says will. He Man. <laughs> he Man. It didn't say He Man. It totally said Me Moss. <laughs> it was just very hard to read for for, for us. So I thought, okay. <laughs> Well, now that we're disappointed that He-Man and Skeletor are not going to show up and do like the dirty dancing routine. Oh my my God, that'd be so good. Amazing. Mm. I'm like, we need a a Strange South podcast float. Mm -hmm. We need Bigfoot with the Santa hat. We need Hug and Molly. We need Three-Legged Lady. Mm -hmm. We need all the things. Yes, we need... We need it. We need that's the float that we all deserve. Christmas float. It can be shaped like a banana UFO, and that'll be the five shout out. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Aliens. That's right. Between now and next year, we need to buy a banana shaped UFO. I guess so. A banana shaped trailer. (laughs) With lights on it. Need to get on our paper mache. I was like, we don't even have a, a car to pull things with i was like we're just gonna we're just gonna use my minivan we'll and hang the out the windows <laughs> yeah yeah courtney will but have a you camera know what? if like the i'll t- ride in there i'll drive y'all so i can have some heat and you can be on the back <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but i was like you know if the tax services of calhoun county can have a car in a mm-hmm. parade like i feel like we definitely deserve a spot at the table <laughs> we deserve a spot at <laughs> this christmas re- if we pay oh them yeah whatever, they'll, they'll totally entrance they whatever. will agree to this totally <laughs> and now we know because we've been like we've been side eye on everybody else's parade float so mm-hmm. we're like you know what we need we need loud music loud and music, we need lights, dancing and we need non-ending candy and we yeah, need yes we candy. need like and you need to throw it to the a teenagers ball pit filled with candy right and you've you've got to throw that candy to the shy kids who are scared to say anything mm-hmm. and not the loud mouth adults. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz dude in front of us was like working it and he, he was. was getting all the candy. Yeah, well he knew everybody. He was he like, did. "Hey, Chuck." Mm-hmm. He was making like dad jokes about everything that went by. I was like, that guy knows how to do it, though. Mm, I was like, right. our kids, they won't even wave. I was mm-hmm. like, you have to wave. Have if you say Merry Christmas, they'll throw stuff at you. Make, like, you don't even have to make eye contact. Just kind of look in their general direction and wave. Well, I told Patrice because we have some generally, like, non-emotive children. Right. And so I was like, the people at the floats are probably just seeing, like, this crowd of like five very dour looking kids just like <laughs> glaring up at them from the sidelines they not they don't exactly like exude love for christmas right. you know? so and there there's some some grinches <laughs> up, up in the mix but you know but anyway that was fun so we got plans and randy um 
you're making our Bigfoot costume, just so you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll expect a fitting in a couple of weeks. Who's <laughs> wearing it? I'll, I'll wear, wear it. it. <laughs> You're the tallest. Yeah. I'm well, the, and I have the biggest feet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I, I can be warm. It's, it that's will fine. make you warm. Yeah. That's good. All right. Oh, I have one correction. Oh, oh I've got a correction shit. too, but go ahead. So in episode 116, which was two behind where we are now, was mm-hmm. the episode where we talked about Radium Springs. Patrice talked about Radium Springs. And um, we all did the exact same thing. All of us were like, oh, yes, that play, the Radium Girls that we saw at the university and we loved it so much. And we did see a play at the university that we loved so much that was about the, you know, the radium workers in the clock face factory or whatever. But it was called These Shining Lives. It was not called the Radium Girls. There is a play that was apparently released like at the same time. That's called the Radium Girls. It's about the exact same thing. Right. But that's not the play we saw. So we wanted Sorry. to correct the record and say it was These Shining these Lives. Shining and lives. it was a great. Was we great. really, really enjoyed it. it and it was really, really great. It so. was really. It was. I had no idea. So I was like entertained. It looks spectacular. And I was well educated on something that I totally didn't even know about. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Okay. My correction um, like if anybody like held my foot over a fire or like for a lot of the information for the radium stuff it it was loosely true but but no it, it was mostly true but i noticed when i was going back editing it it's like you know when they noticed that the uh airport manufacturer for the little dolls on the planes and stuff they did not burn it to the ground because burning does shit all to radium mm-hmm. you have to tear the materials down and then you have to like remove it so they didn't burn it they like knocked it down and they removed it and the dirt that it was sitting on and around that was radioactive and mm. disposed of it so that really bugged me because i said that like burned it to the ground i was like well burning don't do shit to like radioactivity mm-hmm. it's just like oh yeah it just makes it easier to carry off i guess but they didn't do that okay they knocked it down i don't know that's it that's all <laughs> all right and I'm sure I, I got a couple other things wrong, but eh, most, we always do. M- most of it's true. <laughs> you can check my sources. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> the thought that counts. <laughs> there is a disclaimer. Okay, okay. Right, there I is know, a huge true. disclaimer. What All do right. we call this? Peppermint kilt. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you know how I am. If I don't top up this uh, now, I'll never do it. Thank you. Yeah, it's done. Recipes for all. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. Do you want more Strange South every week? We can help. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can join our Facebook fan group, Fans of the Strange South Podcast, to keep the chat going with our whole creepy community. Do you have a story idea for us or a story of your own to share? Email us at stories at the strange south.com. Plus, if you join our Patreon, you not only help support the podcast, you get an exclusive bonus episode for every show and a discount on merch. You can find links to all of these things on our website, thestrangesouth.com, along with photos, links, and show notes from every episode, Strange South t shirts, mugs, and other goodies. See you there. This may sound like a mini great or a great mini zany premises for movies that we're going to talk about tonight okay. for a movie. This is going to sound like a great zany premise. Okay. It's in line with like Sharknado. Oh. Which I couldn't get through. I tried really hard because like Sharknado, like it hit that checked all my boxes, but... <laughs> I, I couldn't. All your boxes are what? Flying sharks? <laughs> Flying <but> sharks. <laughs> tornadoes. Natural disasters. Natural, like it's, yeah. We had Velocipaster, which mm-hmm. we have not been able to bring myself to watch yet. 
Despite all the glowing recommendations. Yeah, despite all I really the, don't know why we I have watched that. Shark and Saw, though. We did watch the so, Shark Kansas. We said Shark Kansas Women's Prison, Women's Prison Massacre. Massacre. Right, which of our Montgomery show after party fame. And uh, I went back and looked at Shark Kansas. And uh, remember, like, we were like, God, that woman looks so familiar in it. And it was Tracy Lords. Yes, that's mm-hmm. right. So she, like, I think she even, like, produced it or directed it or whatever and starred in it. And y'all have probably heard us talk about Shark Kansas Women's Prison Massacre. And if not, then you're about to hear a little bit more. Yay! Oh, no! Revisiting! <laughs> I love it so much. I'm going to revisit. Because, again, sharks. Or Kansas or Arkansas. Yes, sure. Yeah. Kansas. Um, <laughs> Women's Prison Massacre, Tracy Lords, right? That's really all you need to know about the show. But the premise says oh. when a fracking environmental accident rips apart the Earth's crust, the resulting hole lets out prehistoric sharks from underground that target a group of women. <laughs> that was how it happened. I didn't remember that. Trap them in a cabin. In a cabin in the woods. In the woods. And then you can see their dorsal fin. Coming, coming through the, the ground dirt. through the ground and right they're women prisoners mm-hmm. yes they're hot and, super yeah, hot women super prisoners short shorts short with, shorts yeah lots tops. of makeup mm-hmm. so much makeup yeah i can base the short shorts and crop tops mm-hmm. not a bad look <laughs> no it, it, i mean it was very entertaining like four years later we're oh, still hell. talking about oh, it oh hell right? yeah yeah it was iconic really it was, really was this one I'm just going to talk about really should be like a Christmas story that's told every year with a backstory uh, that's similar to Narcos. If you have you watched Narcos, it's on Netflix. It stars our favorite Mandalorian and oh, Oberyn Martell from Game of Thrones. Oh, uh, uh, Pedro Pascal. Pedro. Yeah, he's cute. God, he's so he's good. He's the Mandalorian. He is the Mandalorian. He is. Yes, mm-hmm. but Does you don't he, see him uh, much. You only see him one time. Well, I mean, in I, episode, after in season one, the way they smashed his head into a pulp in Game of uh, Thrones, no. I imagine. Yeah, he was the Red Viper. I mean, yeah, I haven't watched. Yeah, he yet. died very quickly. So yeah, spoilers. So this is the type of tale that you know we thought that maybe we had talked about in the past. I asked people around me if we talked about this. I I did searches to make sure, like, we haven't done an episode on this. We've listened to episodes on this. And I've had conversations with Randy and Courtney. I was like, are you sure we have not covered this? I did forget. I totally forgot. (laughs) I told you I would. (laughs) And I was listening to MFM because they did... uh, a story on this in 2021 and they had the exact same conversations I'm having right now. I was like, did we cover this? Or we, we talked about this. We did. And they were like, whatever, we're going to do it again. And so that's pretty much what I'm saying now. I know I didn't talk about it, but if we did touch on it and talk about it, we're going to talk about it again. It's none other than the Pooh Bear of Colombian Blow. You're doing the fucking cocaine <laughs> bear. bear. Oh Pablo my God. Escobar. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. You know and love uh, uh, You're cocaine doing cocaine bear. bear. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So, uh, no, we've never done cocaine bear. <laughs> and there's a movie coming out. That's right. So there's a resurgence going on. There's tons of articles going on. There is... Courtney has a t-shirt. I, I bought it for her for Christmas. Last year. Right. Kentucky for Kentucky did it. K-Y so, for K-Y. yeah, <laughs> exactly. Who currently houses the yeah. um, cocaine. S- stuffed cocaine bear. <laughs> so anyway, the movie's supposed to come out in 20, February of next year, 2023. We'll get to the movie soon enough, but I kind of want to set the stage here. Okay. Do it. Okay. Set it. So December 1985. The AP Wire sends out a story, sends out a story saying investigators searching for cocaine dropped by an airborne smuggler have found a ripped cord, a found a ripped up shipment of the sweet smelling powder. And I'm like, "Mm, somebody at the AP doing some lines (laughs) and the remains of a bear that apparently died of a multi-million dollar high. (laughs) That was the AP press, right? Obviously, things take off from there. And y'all, this is one of the craziest stories that you absolutely cannot simply make. Mm -hmm. I mean, every aspect of this story. And 
it's just the 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 narcos part of it that we're, we're, I'm going to talk about tonight is just it's crazy. It's all crazy. Okay, 1985 pop culture just to get us in the mood <laughs> in the era. Uh, Live Aid was happening. Live Aid was pop concerts in Philadelphia and in London that raised over fifty million dollars for famine relief and. Ethiopia, like we are the world. We are the world. We are the children. We are the children. (laughs) That one. (laughs) New Coke came out. Oh God. This was gross. Which quickly died. Bye. A good death. Greenpeace ship. You remember the Rainbow Warrior? It was actually sunk when French agents planted a bomb in the hole. I did not know that that happened. I Hmm. remember that that happened. Route 66 is removed from the United States highway system. Nintendo released like its NES system Mm -hmm. to North America in 85. The color purple Mm -hmm. uh, came out. Michael Jordan was rookie of the year. Ah. Inflation was 3.5%. And right now inflation is 7.7%. The average cost of a new home was about $89,000. A median price of an existing home was about $75,000. Average income per year was about twenty two k. Well, damn. Compare that to the 89. Then. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're an yeah, adjunct, it hasn't changed. Mm. Let's see. Average rent was 375 Average price for a new car was about $9,000. Gas was a dollar oh nine. <laughs> Movie tickets were two seventy five. Jesus. Postage stamps. I missed that. Yeah. Postage stamps were twenty two cents and a pound of bacon was a dollar sixty five. Oh. As opposed to seven fifty. However, the cost of Coke was sky high. No Coke, bad pun. Like Coca Cola? No. Cocaine. Never <laughs> blow. I thought you were saying Coca Cola. Nose candy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nose candy. It was sky high, right? So the businessinsider.com actually has a chart of the pricing of cocaine in the US. And it shows like where it has like gone up and dipped. So about this time, it was like way more expensive than bacon. <laughs> it was like, you know, who had Coke money? Nowadays, it's like, I got Coke money. I don't have bacon money. Because mm-hmm. bacon is so freaking expensive now. <laughs> anyway, the article is very interesting. And it also like shows how, how Coke is made. Basically, you're putting up your nose paste, dried paste. that are made from leaves that they just kind of piled together. And they take a weed whacker and boots. Like, it's seriously... I was watching them like process the leaves um, in this article. It looked like my guys out in the front yard, like blowing all my leaves together and then just like kind of mulching them with the weed whacker. I'm sure it's very clean. Anyway, in 85, individual amounts of Coke went for about $550 for up to 10 grams. So it was very expensive. A gram if like we're talking about like a gram of salt is about a six of a teaspoon. Jeez. Prices came down with more Coke flooding into the States from Escobar. Again, watch Narcos. Narcos is so good. Narcos is where we get all the memes of the guy, the big guy, like staring off into space on the swing, like when you're waiting on something. That's Escobar. Like in the 80s, late 80s and 90s, when like they started flooding cocaine into uh, the U.S., the prices went down. And then you also have crack cocaine, which developed shortly after cocaine hit the U.S., which was basically the poor man's coke because it was a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. Recreational cocaine, just, you know, we used to have cocaine in coke. The mm-hmm. drink, yeah, which I um, would imagine and be like fantastic, but that wasn't yes. like in the 80s though, that was no. like way 1880s. before, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it was in the 1880s because by 1914, recreational use became illegal, ah. but they still use it for medical. Um, I remember one time one of my friends like broke their nose and they actually used like coke to help numb, um, some kind of medicinal coke or something that they had to snort to numb. <laughs> The Weird. Process. Yeah, but that was like also in the 80s, 90s and stuff. So who knows? Coke names. Slang is blow, bump, coke, crack, dust, flake, line, nose candy, pearl, rail, snow, sneeze, sniff, 
speedball, toot, and white rock. So back to the 1985 cocaine bear. And it all starts with a rich guy from Kentucky. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Andrew Carter Thornton II. His friends called him Drew, so we're just going to call him Drew. <laughs> he was born in 1944 in Bourbon County, Kentucky. His folks had a stud farm. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but like horses are really big in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much what with the Kentucky Derby and the, all right. Kentucky Derby and all. So like, you know, they were in the blue blood society, you know, raising horses, racing horses, had money. Uh, so he went to like, you know, the good schools, prep schools, and then went to, I think like at the age of 14, went to military school which was like a boys boarding school, but it wasn't because like he was forced into it. Like your parents used to threaten you like you're going to military school if mm -hmm. you don't, you know, straighten up. It wasn't like that. It's like everybody, all the men went to this military school. And so once he got out of school, he joined the ROTC and he attended the University of Kentucky for a semester and dropped out before joining the army. He trained in Fort Bragg as a paratrooper for the 82nd Airborne Division, and he was actually in the U.S. invasion of the Dominican Republic in 1965, which I had no idea that that was like a thing, but apparently the Dominican Republic was in a civil war at the time, and, and so you can look that up if you're interested in that. That's all I'm going to say about that. So after that, after he got out of the Army, after the invasion, because I think he got hurt or he was recovering from that, he quit the Army and joined the Lexington Fayette urban county police department at the age of 24 so he's done all of this like the wow. army the paratroop he went to college for like a semester and then like that's when he dropped out and went into the army he fought you know in that invasion and then got out and then he you know joined the police department and this was right at the height of like the 60s late 60s flower power free love war protest and drew didn't want to be a hippie. He wanted to arrest hippies, basically. <laughs> so while he was there working as a police, <laughs> he um, took night classes at Eastern Kentucky University and graduated with a degree in law enforcement at the age of 27. And by this time, he was a member of the Lexington Police Department narcotics squad and did like narcotics stuff, like worked on narcotics um, investigation with the Louisville DEA. Military, cop, drugs, 70s, what could go wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the DEA agents that he worked with, Robert Brightwell, described Drew as a 007 paramilitary type personality, an adventurer driven by adrenaline rushes. Who became, who became bored being a cop, right? Mm -hmm. Also, I forgot to mention that Drewster, during this time, took night classes uh, or continued taking night classes at the University of Kentucky College of Law and earned a law degree by the time he was 32. Oh, okay. He also like had his pilot's license. He could fly a plane. He was a master of martial arts who bragged about killing a German shepherd with his bare hands. Oh. Douche. Which, yeah, I'm like, sir, that makes you a master wow. of douchery. Yeah. Oh. He was an expert skydiver. He was famous among jumpers for, like, pulling low or releasing the chute at below 2,000 feet. Oh. Among his friends, he was considered a man of loyalty, religious, charming, intelligent. He had extraordinary self-confidence. And kind of just as a sidebar, and I'll talk about this a little bit in the after uh, talk, I watched Low Country, the Murdo, Murdo, Murdo. Yeah, Murda. Uh, Murda. Murder. Mur is really what they, you know, yeah. the ones. That, Dynasty. Yeah. 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 Mm. On HBO. And there's, it's like every rich, privileged Family of power. I mean, it's the same stories. It's the tales you know all the, the time. Talking about the mm -mm. one whose son. We've yeah. listened to it before. It's the guy who shot his wife and his son over in North it's Carolina. South oh, Carolina. this is South the one Carolina. that. Okay, I remember talking about the actual case, but I haven't yeah. watched mm -hmm. anything about I haven't it. Watched anything? Yeah. Their name is spelled. It's Scottish, I guess. Yeah. M U R D A U G H. Murder. 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 Actually. Yeah, that's fitting. <laughs> 
really, I watched that on HBO. It just came out. And it's a study of like the good old boys, it's white, wealth, yeah. and power and privilege. And that's very much what plays into Drew and his lifestyle here. So his friends and his friends, you know, they describe him like as a good person. And when I was watching, you know, this documentary, when they interviewed friends of Alec Murdoch, they described him as a good person. And it's like, I'm sorry, you cannot be a good person and murder your your, your wife and child. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so to his enemies, Drew was ruthless, egotistical, amoral, driven by an ego so fragile, he overcompensated it with machismo. Machismo. And so it was bad. all of this, it's this Starsky and Hutch mentality, machismo, driving fast cars, being flamboyant, being a narc. You know, I just picture him as like gold chains, mustache, <laughs> chest hair, like in the 70s when all of, all of this, like when he was like in oversized his prime, sunglasses, oversized like sunglasses, gold everywhere. After nine years, he decides to quit uh, the police force and practice law, which he never really got around to because he decided to become a drug smuggler. Oh, okay. Because apparently, like, all the other things he was doing was not doing it for him. And and again, he's a rich Kentucky blue blood boy, so he doesn't have to do this for money. He has, like, a stud farm that he can help with his dad at any time, and he mm-hmm. does right when he uh, graduated from high school and stuff. But then he, like, came and became a cop and, like, then became a lawyer. And so now he decides that, He's going to be a drug smuggler. After nine years of being on the police force, this is kind of like an aside um, that somebody mentioned in one of the articles that I was reading, because there's a lot of information about him. And we'll get to cocaine, like how he is related to cocaine bear in a little bit. But they said that his mentality, and I wanted to bring this up because I feel like we are still living with this mentality, is that he was anticipating a nuclear holocaust. Okay. Or what? a civil war. Okay. Or like a race war. <laughs> Therefore, drug smuggling. Right. So he was stockpiling, like he had this farm, like his dad's property, that he kind of turned into like a mercenary camp, like a soldier of fortunes camp. And he stockpiled like paramilitary weapons, freeze dried goods, oh gold my coins. God. He always wore camouflage fatigues. He had swastikas, bulletproof vest. I was, was talking about, you know, eyes for eyes, teeth for teeth. Uh, he considered himself a freelance military advisor of sort. And he was always siding with like the anti-communist around the world, like the Salvadorian government, the Nicaraguan Contras and the South African industrialists. He was really preparing himself for Armageddon. Or I feel like he was just playing G.I. Joe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I really do yeah. feel like this is what all this was about. Mm-hmm. But one of his buddies, um, Bradley Bryant, in 1977, when Drew was like around 33, decided that they were going to form this private security company called Executive Protection Limited. Oh, God. And... <laughs> What this company did on the outside was to cultivate and recruit police from around the United States to do like security details mm-hmm. for like different events and stuff like that. But really, it was just a front for a, a huge drug smuggling operation <laughs> that used like cops and ex cops to to do all this. That seems like a risk. Like, how do you know you're recruiting like the dirty cops? Then that's but weird. Here's the thing. Guess what? Being rich and white and already in knowing the lawyers and the mayors and the police and the judges. Guess what that gets you? That gets you that you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. And this is how they operated. They had no fear of being caught. A lot of this, there's actually an FBI file, like two part episode on this company. It's called The Company. And it's called Dangerous Company. It's like, you know, they did like a two part series on it. And it really, truly like could have been a cross between Breaking Bad and The Wire, Mm -hmm. like with all the corruption and stuff, although not so much The Wire. 
because these are rich white boys. They bought a plane for smuggling. Actually, they bought several planes um, for smuggling weed and guns and then selling it. So they are just fucking arrogant. And they would they would like this is like all pre 11, 9 11, right? All pre 9 11. Mm hmm. There was like very loose regulations. Nobody was checking like what was in your plane. Nobody's checking like who were you, what you doing, where are you going? But they would use Drew to like fly these planes under the radar, close to the ground with no lights on. And they would use military uh, night vision in order to see mm -hmm. that they had stolen from an air base or a military base that somebody who was current, you know, somebody's cousin was currently working at kind mm. of deal. And then they would use that. And, and at the time it was all weed. Like there was no Coke. So they were like transporting, they would like fly down to the Bahamas or fly down and, and, you know, somewhere in South America, pick up like just pounds and pounds of weed and then bring it back. They would land at the airport, like in the middle of the night and, Immediately, somebody was there to, like, take all the weed off the plane. Then they would clean up the plane. Sometimes they would even, wouldn't even clean up the plane, and they would just leave the plane there. Mm -hmm. And so they were done with that plane. So when they're ready for another mission, they just go buy another plane. Oh. So it was like they would just dump planes, which is really stupid because when I was watching the FBI files on uh, Drew and Bryant, what was his name? Bradley. Drew and Bradley. <laughs> uh, they, like, they, they got a little bit smarter. They cleaned the planes because... They had noticed that, you know, of course, somebody found the plane and they looked through it and somebody like there was weed in the plane. So they're like, well, we better like clean up a little bit. But the dude like left a magazine on the plane with like his address. Mm. Like, you know, oh my God, back in the day, we used to have to order magazines <laughs> and like they would have your name and where you lived on the <laughs> magazine. And so if you took the magazine anywhere, it was your name. And so he would leave stuff like that in the plane. But they wouldn't go after him. Hmm. But of course, at that point, they were cleaning the plane. So they really had nothing other than just ditching a plane to go after him with. So it was really stupid. The FBI files do a really good job, a very dramatic job of, of talking about like all the because they get into it with like some of the bigger um, drug smuggling. They get into where they starting to rob military bases. Of, you know, like I said, the uh, glow in the dark, the mm -hmm. night, night vision goggles. <laughs> but they were also stealing like heavy military grade weaponry. They were stealing like tank busters. The fuck? And like all of these things that normal people were not supposed to have. And they were selling it to terrorists, like um, mid, mid, Middle East terrorists. They were selling it down to South Americans, uh, drug lords. And they, they were, like, doing some, like, really heavy, dirty shit and were getting away with it because anytime somebody would come sniffing around, they'd get, like, somebody from the police or somebody that was a friend or a buddy saying, hey, somebody brought up your name, and they would fix it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the fixing it was they would kill them. Oh. Like, they were dirty. They were, like, really bad if, you know, they got busted with military uh, weapons that they had taken from an Air Force base in California that was actually Bradley's cousin had worked there. So they made the connection so that they went and arrested Bradley. Actually, I don't think they arrested him. It was really stupid because, again, they think they're invincible and they don't think about like everybody's beneath them. So how Bradley got busted is that he was trying to, or they, what he would do, he would pay off like the maids when he was like in a hotel room and he would say, okay, don't clean my room. I'm like, here's some money. Don't look in my room. Don't open the room. Don't come into my room. Here's the money. And I think what had happened is that he or somebody in his room was smoking weed and she smelled it. So she called the cops on him. And that's how he gets busted because he was in possession of that time of like a cache of semi-automatic weapons, disguises, mm -hmm. more than 10 fraudulent Kentucky driver's license and about $22,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. He also had a notebook containing the names and addresses of several Lexington hire like men of prominence mm -hmm. that were working in 
the business with him. And also about a planned operation named Bluefin. So he and 25 others were arrested for conspiracy to import and distribute marijuana and to steal government property from the China Lake Naval Base that was in California. Drew's name was also in the book, but he heard about that and he fled. This is where, I mean, Drew and especially Bradley Bryant were very much, you know, we talked about an eye for an eye. They had no qualms about taking somebody out. If they thought somebody was going to be arrested or somebody was going to give them up or talk to somebody or somebody was a liability, they would take them out. So um, Drew flees and doesn't stop working. He actually got caught because he was like down off the coast of Louisiana with like a um, 56 foot converted mine sweeper, which I don't really know what that is, but I figure it's a big fucking boat Hmm. that was carrying about 1,500 pounds of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And there was a machine gun that was registered to him in that boat. He wasn't there, but since they connected like the gun to him and all the things on the boat to him, he actually just did like a short stint, like six months in jail. But he was questioned During this time, because a lot of the people, like I said, they were taking out people that were talking. And as people were being arrested, they were wanting to control the situation. You know, a lot of the people around him started showing up dead. So vendetta deaths were a big thing in this group, this company. And he was connected to a lot of them. So the Florida State's attorney who... um. And it was pretty much everybody that was very strict on drugs and would go after them for the drugs showed up dead. So Gene Berry, a, a Florida state attorney, was murdered at point blank range um, in 1982 when he opened the door of his residence. He had successfully prosecu- uh, prosecuted one of Drew's um, co- uh, co-defendants, Robert Walker, a witness against Drew in the case, was found dead in a swamp a- uh, Tampa. Uh, let's see, Harold Wade Brown. Um, actually, before we get to Harold Wade Brown, one of the federal judges that was going after Bryant, um, who was really the main guy, I felt like Drew was more like the muscle, where um, Bradley Bryant was more of like the brains behind the operation. He was very staunch on drug dealers at the time and was probably going to go after and convict him to go away for a long time, ends up dead. Like they were shooting federal judges, they were shooting attorneys, they were shooting anybody, and they were threatening jurors. So there was juror tapping. So nobody really did any time Hmm. um, at all. Like I said, Drew did like maybe six months. I think Bryant got like 15 years. And I'm not sure. I don't really remember if he got out or not. Anyway. It's just a lot of people's names. But one of the former heads of the DA office in Kentucky about this time that everybody's getting busted, Harold Wade Brown, uh, and one of Drew's closest friends for many years, it was found shot to death in Louisville in apparent suicide, according to the coroner's inquest. And it was because Brown had thwarted the probe into uh, when they were looking at Drew for piloting one of those planes that was carrying the, the marijuana. Several just walked, charges were dropped, juries were acquitted, a lot of shady shit happening. All of this happened early 80s. And Bryant and Drew got into an argument. So Drew decided to do his own thing and leave the company with that Bryant wasn't start his own deal. So it's like they were doing the same thing. Bryant was still maybe in jail. I'm not sure. Anyway, just watch the FBI files. <laughs> Learn more about that. So he moved on from pot to coke. He was making runs from South America to the U.S., flying under the radar. Like I said, this was before 9-11 where they could do whatever. No one was checking, which is kind of ironic that on September 11th, 1985, <laughs> when he was on one of these drug smugglings from Colombia, uh, Drew and his partner jumped from the autopiloted Cessna 404. The reason that they were dumping was because supposedly there was too much weight. And I don't really understand. Well, we can talk about this a little bit. 
So supposedly there's too much weight on the plane, so they were dumping all the Coke. And by dumping all the Coke, I mean there was like 40 plastic containers of cocaine that fell on Blairsville, Georgia. There was about 300 pounds of cocaine. Oh, my God. 300 pounds of almost like 90-something <clears throat> proof, like high-quality cocaine, 300 pounds. When his, the first guy jumped, he like had a hard landing but made it okay. Drew jumped, and something happened to his parachute, and it ended up refalling to the ground where later his body was discovered. Ooh. In Knoxville, Tennessee, by Fred Myers. Yikes. So he jumps, and then the plane is still on autopilot. He keeps going, and then it crashes like 60 miles later in Hayesville, North Carolina, and it just runs into a mountain and crashes. So by this time, Drew's already dead. And when Fred finds him, Drew is wearing a bulletproof vest, Gucci loafers. Mm -hmm. night vision goggles he has a browning nine millimeter automatic pistol on him a 22 caliber pistol several rounds of ammunition a stiletto forty five hundred dollars in cash he has gold coins on him <laughs> food rations vitamins a compass an altometer identification papers in two different names a membership card the Miami Jockey Club <laughs> and a key to the airplane. So the Miami Jockey Club is actually like kind of mini on clubhouse in Miami. And it was where one of the drug people, one of his drug connections uh, lived, that he would hang out there a lot with them. That all happened. And it like was written up, a little blurb, nothing, you know, they're still like trying to prosecute people for like this whole huge international drug cartel thing that's going on from these Kentucky boys. And three months later, however, in the Chattahoochee National Forest, hunters found a, in Fannin County, Georgia, just south of the Tennessee border, a dead black bear. However, besides the dead black bear, there was one of those containers containing the cocaine, the cocaine, mm -hmm. with the dead bear right next to it. And the hunters never did say anything. This is this is the thing I can't figure it out. So they found it, I think, not shortly after Drew died, like before the three months later. But it was three months later that the rumor of the dead bear with the cocaine got around to officials because they had they didn't even know about it until the hunters and the hunters like it's Georgia, it's the South. Most people like find a dead bear bear and coke in the forest they may not like call cops and they didn't so they found it through like i think word of mouth somewhere somebody was talking about what was found so they finally the officials found it three months later it was dead and by this time it was like bones in a big hide it had eaten 75 pounds of coke oh god. my god and oh. the value at that time was like two million dollars so even though it had eaten 75 pounds of coke, it had only absorbed like three to four grams of it before it died. And the doctor who did the bear autopsy, that's right, <laughs> said that its stomach was literally packed to the brim with cocaine. Ah! There isn't a mammal on the planet that could have survived that. It had cere cerebral hemorrhaging, respiratory failure, hypothermia, renal failure, heart failure, oh my stroke, God. you name it, that bear had it. <laughs> That's awful. So Dr. Ken Alonzo was the guy that did the autopsy. Um, he didn't want to waste the bear's body, so he had it taxidermied. Mm -hmm. And then he gifted it to the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. And then something happened. There was like a fire and they had to store it somewhere. And then the bear just kind of got lost for a little while. And then it reemerged in a pawn shop mm -hmm. where one of the people who knew that Waylon Jennings mm -hmm. liked weird shit from pawn shops <laughs> called him up. So Waylon Jennings bought the cocaine bear. Mm -hmm. And then after Waylon died or got rid of it, um, it ended up in a traditional Chinese medicine shop, mission uh. shop medicine shop mm -hmm. in Reno, Nevada. What? And this Chinese woman's 
husband bought it because he thought it was cool. She hated it. <laughs> and so when he died, she was like trying, like she had it like in the garage or something. And like I said, she hated it. But this um, place, Kentucky for Kentucky, remember about the cocaine bear. And so they go through this whole thing of trying to find and trace cocaine bear. So they call like the Chattahoochee place and then they talk to somebody. So they, they remember the cocaine bear story. And they do investigation and they find out about Waylon Jennings and then they track it down, like, who got it after that. And they ended up talking to this woman in Reno, Nevada, and she was like, come take this fucking bear. <laughs> you um, can have it. You can have it. All you got to do is ship the thing because it's fucking huge. I think it was like a 175 pound bear, which really is mm. not that big. I mean, for a bear, I guess so. Um, but like compared to a grizzly. Anyway, so Kentucky for Kentucky uh, bought it, and it is still there, and um, it is at the Fun Mall, (laughs) if you want to go to, and they, like, have all the merch for it, it's stuffed, you can have your picture taken with (laughs) it, it is a really nice roadside trip, (laughs) and maybe one day we can go see Okay. You can get Bear. a t-shirt that kind of looks like the Coca-Cola yep. polar bear uh, kind of look. It's a red shirt. Mm-hmm. It's a red shirt that has yes. a Coca-Cola look to it. Mm-hmm. So all of the things Which that I love. led mm-hmm. up to Cocaine Bear with um, Drew and his company is, and it's not so much like the whole like smuggling ring beforehand. I don't know how much they, they're going to do, but there's going to be a movie about Cocaine Bear because it was announced in 2021 and it's going to be directed by Elizabeth Banks. Mm-hmm. And the trailer came out and I watched it. I did too. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is this? It's because it's a, like a complete fictionalization. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. it's, it's kind of like a campy horror. Yeah. Right? It's a campy horror. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, Ridiculousness. It, it's, it says, um, an oddball group of cops, criminals, and tourists, <laughs> criminals, tourists, and teens converge on a Georgia forest where a 500 pound black bear uh-huh. goes on a murderous rampage yes, after intentionally ingesting cocaine well the thing about it is it's like ray liotta 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 Liotta, Mm -hmm. ray liotta ray liotta was this is his last film because he he died that's so sad oh that's right i forgot he died yeah of of goodfellas (sighs) fame Mm. Carrie fucking Russell of Felicity. Carrie yeah. Russell, yeah. And Margot Martindale, who is like a fantastic character actor. Act, actor, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love her. She is so good. And y'all I don't would recognize think I know her. her. You would recognize her if you saw her. She's been in fucking everything. Okay. And, oh God, I didn't write this guy's name down, but it's got the um, one of the crooked senators from The Wire on there, hmm. um, which I thought was appropriate considering... The whole deal with Andrew Carter Thornton the second. O'Shea Jackson Jr.'s in it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Margo Martindale yeah, is familiar, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I can't remember what I've seen her in, but I've seen yeah. her in a billion things. She's like a, a typical Midwestern mom mm-hmm. kind of persona. Which is But that is my tale of Cocaine Bear and all the craziness that happens leading up to it. Like you cannot. Cocaine bear. Did they did they figure out how long did it take him to figure out? Since he was far away and he was in one state, the plane was in another state, and the bear was dead in another. Yeah. When did they put all that together? That it was all that? Did they do it immediately? Oh, well, yeah. Well, they found out that the plane was his because he had like the key in his pocket mm-hmm. that had the plane's like license number on it, mm-hmm. and then the um like the container that the cocaine was in and the cocaine i don't know if the had co- a magazine in it with his, yeah. like with his, <laughs> with his headdress right <laughs> and it would be fitting um it was exactly the same container as the ones that was dumped out uh-huh. um and also like the cocaine the way it was packaged it was packaged like it had usa on it and everything so it's like similar materials so they just matched the bend and the materials that the cocaine was transported into what was dumped um, and where was the uh, other guy? Did the he other, die? No, the other guy still is still alive. What? He was he he got out of it. He wasn't. 
from what I understand from listening to um, Karen and Georgia in my film, and I couldn't find anything to um, substantiate this. He apparently was like his karate instructor. Oh. And was just along for the ride and didn't know what the hell's going on until he was already up in the air. And then Drew was like, hey, look, we're kind of doing this. And then. <laughs> Likely story. We've got 300 pounds of cocaine so in here. He, he was like, yeah, since nobody's alive to like counter argue mm-hmm. the point. Mm-hmm. He didn't he didn't get serve any time or anything like that. Interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is interesting. Hmm. Poor bear. But um, I must say. And if squirrels. You, I mean, you know, that bear was not the only thing dipping in some coke if, out if there. You, uh, that just, bear. As if they need a plug. But if you've never watched that Nick Terry animation That's that so they funny. do for MFM. The right. Best. On their uh, YouTube channel, P- please. The Cocaine Bear one, I've probably watched it like 10 times. Yeah, it's really hilarious. Funny. <laughs> it's oh hilarious. My... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But anyway, so now we have done Cocaine Bear. Cocaine, cocaine bear. bear. We've done Cocaine and, um, Bear. Cooper and her Cocaine Bear returns to the second. South. Yay. Right. Kentucky Drug Lord. And cocaine bear. <laughs> it kind of covers the whole South. There was like Florida and Georgia. Mm-hmm. Alabama's not in there. No. Um, well, they Kentucky, must have North Carolina. To be, yeah. Where is it again? Blairsville? Mm hmm. Yeah. It's not that far. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk Yay. more about logistics, about why. Uh, in the after talk. In the after talk. After talk. Awesome. All right. So thank y'all so much for listening. Thanks. Appreciate bye. you. Bye. Bye.